So let's take a look at another way we can generate motion on this ball from this throwing shot. Um, so we use the dynamic motion to be able to control it and change it around as we want. And uh, now we're just going to use it if she wanted to throw it and we just wanted the ball to continue on. We can use uh, Ragdoll to get us some rigid body dynamic motion on uh, there, RBD motion. Uh, without really knowing how to do any of that, we just use it with the Ragdoll. And we can see how simple it will be. So if I just take a look at my animation that I have here... It's the one picking up and throwing it, and I just have some really rough animation going in here. And it would take me a long time to try and get that bounce to feel perfectly correct, the right timing, the right spacing. So let's just get this uh, done with Ragdoll instead. And so what we can do is we hit C and we go into Ragdoll. And from here, uh, we have a few uh, options that we can uh, take a look at. So with the ragdoll settings that we have on here. Now what I'm going to do is, let me just, uh, first of all, I want to just uh, delete this keys here. Because I'm just going to do it again. So um, if we take a look and we just turn the ball on as active, you can just see it just stays in spot. Because it's just actually getting kicked by her. We just have, It's active right away, so it's just on the ground. So what we want to do is tell it when we want to turn it on. So in this case, say we want to turn it on at frame 59. So if we select the ball, um, the, the ragdoll ball here, um, what we can do is if we set a key here at uh, frame 59 and we go back one frame and we set another key on it, but we click on it again to turn it off. And now what we'll have is uh, the ball being picked up and now it's bouncing right down there. So really quickly, we've been able to get that motion on there and I'm just going to turn off the old ball uh, that we could see. And now we could just see the nice bouncing ball animation that we have really quickly without needing to do anything. And what we can do is if we want to, we can get that uh, put back on the animation onto the ball that we want. So um, when we just select the actual ball control, because we want to make sure that what we're going to be recording these poses on. And we can add big keys to new layer action uh checked off so that we'll just do another layer so it will be non-destructive and we can start recording poses so we can go to the frame that we want to we can start recording poses and now we can just drag it out here and this will give us a pose uh key on every frame we can separate it out if we wanted fewer keys on here um but in this case i'm just going to drag it through just so we can get the exact motion out of there because now that we'll, it'll be completely locked on and I'm going to stop recording poses. And now when I go out to animate, um, we have our new ragdoll layer on here. And we can see if I turn on the ball. Now when we uh, press this through, we can see it's actually not moving anywhere. And then it turns on and we get the bounce that we did. And that's because the layer is created as an override layer. So all we need to do is set a key on this uh, on the one frame set a key on the other frame. And then when we go back where we want it to be on there, we just uh, set the weight on that layer to be zero. And now we have all the animation coming in from beforehand, picks it up, all that animation from the base layer, and then we get the bouncing on there. So really quickly, we're able to, instead of having to hand key all that, we can get that done, uh, that uh, ragdoll to be uh, behaving for us as we want. Now, if we want to take another look at uh, something, we could take a look at the character where um, Electra was just standing up. And all I've done is add a really simple animation layer on here. So if we look at the Electra block, it's just starting here. And she's just lifting a table and then she's going to kick back. So again, if I wanted her to flip this table, instead of me animating this table and having to get it all out there, instead of me having to animate the chair getting kicked and knocked back, what we can do is we can go into our ragdoll. So if we go into ragdoll here, and I'm just going to turn off our uh, our animated objects here, and we can just look at the ragdoll uh, collision shapes as we're working on. So as I press forward here, we can see we just have the animation going on. But now what we want to do is we want to uh, do the exact same thing. We want to turn it on here. So um, what I'm going to do is go to the frame that I want to have it on. So say say frame 64, I'm going to make it uh, set a key with without it being active. And now I'm going to set a key on this and click on it. And now we have it active. 
And now we have it going up. Actually, this will, let's just change it to be uh, back a couple frames. So I'm just going to go on to um, our graph editor here. And we can see this is where it's turning uh, zero and one, where we're turning it on. I'm just going to move it backwards a bit. So we can just start changing when that timing's happening. And there we go. So now we can get that motion on there and just getting it there. And if we wanted to move it, uh, get it to be higher. So, so let's move this uh, so that we can get some more uh, motion on this uh, um, uh, on the table. So with auto reload animation on and auto resim animation, uh, animation on, what I can do now is I can actually grab the table controller here. And let's just rotate this um, a bit more. And you can see that it'll update as well. And if I turn on the table, we could see if I want to move it up. Now we go there and now it's been, it's automatically updating this uh, for us. And <clears throat> so as I hit the key on, uh, to, on all of these, I'm just going to select these ones here and set a key. And now when we look at it, we'll get much, uh, now the table completely flips over. And if I turn this all off, now we get uh, it moving. So the faster you move it, obviously, the more uh, motion that'll come on from there. And then if we want to take a look at the chair getting hit, so we're going to just take a, select the chair and we're going to do the same thing. So if the foot comes up and the foot's going to hit it right around here, say 77, I'm going to set a key here. And let's set a key right before it as well. Um, and we'll make it active on frame 77, just do it with the checkbox. And now character hits it, and we can see now the chair gets knocked backwards. So just by setting the active uh, on it of when it's happening, we can change the motion of it going into it to get it to be a bigger mo movement. And uh, just setting the active again on it, just like we did with the ball, we can now just activate these uh, to be animated. And so if I wanted to, what I could do is the exact same thing. By selecting the chair control and the table control here, uh, both of them at the same time, we can record them at the same time here. So if we wanted to go up here and say we, let's just record it from uh, frame uh, 59, I'm gonna set recording with the big keys to a new layer. And now as I drag this through, I'm not only gonna get the table animation getting on there, but I'm gonna get the chair one as well. So uh, just by doing that, I'm gonna stop recording poses. And now when we go back out to animate, I can turn on our characters again, and you can see the animation has been uh, put on there. And again, with the same thing, we wanna turn this on uh, to be active um, uh, here uh, with the ragdoll. With the over, we just want to make sure that it gets put on um, on here so we can go to this frame and we get all that animation on there. And now we have that uh, all being put on there. So instead of having to hand animate these things, I could start getting the character interacting with the set or the table uh, just by using Ragdoll and getting some rigid body dynamics put onto these objects uh, without really needing to do any uh, setup except for turning things on or off.